This is where we left off last time and um, we're unceremoniously cut off by Tuesday bell times. Thanks a lot, Assembly. So before we get to this is the main meal, I appreciate this is qualitatively more difficult than those early examples we looked at before. Number one, I've thrown fractions in there. Gross. Number two, you can see I've got variables, uh, or pronumerals I should say, on both terms, which is very different to those very first introductory examples where you just had a one. You can almost ignore that one, it didn't really affect anything. Okay. So my uh, bridge to get into that to help you acclimate a little bit is to think about this guy. Okay. Now I hope you recall, um, the way that we did this manually before was to notice that you can build one binomial upon another, right? Now, a plus b all cubed, maybe you don't know what that is off the top of your head, but a plus b all squared, that's like one of the results that we've been using for so long that it's probably in your mind, right? So I can say, since I know what a plus b all squared already is, like so, I can very quickly develop the expansion for the original thing, the, the cubed thing, um, just by doing that trick I did before, taking the trinomial on the right hand side, multiplying everything by A, then doing the same trinomial of multiplying everything by B, and then you take the sum. That's all, okay? So if you're just catching up with me, then here you can see the first line I'm going to have is A cubed, plus 2A squared B, plus, oops, that's just one, plus AB squared. Are you happy with that? Just multiply through by A. I'm going to multiply through by b now, and just like before, I'm going to sort of push them down a little bit so I can collect the like terms more quickly. So I'm going to get a squared b, 2ab squared, and a b cubed on the end. Does that look alright? Trinomial 1, trinomial 2, now I'll just add them. Now, what you observe is the same pattern of binomial coefficients, the Pascal's triangles numbers that you saw from last time. There's the one, three, three, one. But what this shows us that the previous one didn't show us is that you can see here, just like these powers in there, descend for one of the terms, your other powers ascend from zero to one to two to three. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's have a look at this, okay? Now, it's five, that's what the power is, so therefore I'm on the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. I hope you finished your Pascal's triangle, because it's very, very useful to refer to. If you really want to make it last, you can contact it, but whatever. Um, the numbers I think off the top of my head are going to be one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, I will point out, Pascal's triangle, not on the reference sheet, but I'll explain why, and today this lesson, I will get to how we can use this thing to generate uh, whatever coefficients we need from whichever row that we've got. Okay, so let's have a go. This is uh, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so the first one, and I'm actually going to write it purposefully for myself, is a 1. I'm not going to ignore the fact that it's there. Now, do you remember last time, uh, when I looked at an example like this, and this is, Eric pointed this one out, when I looked at an example like this, even though it seems a little more natural, like I have here, A is first, so A ends up first over here, I didn't put the 1 to the 4 as the first term. The reason why is because what I do is I like to have my expansions written with the, uh, with the pronoun rules as the highest power up the front. So this would be x to the 4, 4x cubed, can someone help me out? 6x squared, or 4x, and then the 1. Okay. However, in this case over here, you've got terms that both have x's in them. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to try and use this pattern here. Either of them is fine. If you do it in reverse order, it's still the same thing, because Pascal's triangle is symmetrical. But here's the way I'm going to begin. I've got one lot of this to the power of 5. For completeness, I'm going to, for my own sake, write that there are some of these, and the number of these that I have is 0. Okay, now I put a lot of effort into that, even though there are some redundant components there, so that I don't forget that there are three components every single time. There's going to be the binomial coefficient, 
then there's going to be some number of these and some number of these. And they just sort of balance each other out. You remember, I'm now going to go down to 4 and then 1. Yeah? And now you kind of establish the pattern. You do the next coefficient. You bring this down 1. You bring this up. Whoops. 1. And then you just sort of go down the other side. Okay? So I'll just finish this off. So is there like a quick formula where we don't have to do that? Um, is there a quick formula where you don't have to do what? Which part are you talking about? Like, exactly that, like those kind of things. Like writing everything out? Yeah. The short answer is no. Um, the quickest thing that you can do is you can work out, like a calculator will do these parts for you. Um, and like I said before, and I will put it out here as well, just looking when I will do it. Sometimes they'll ask you for a specific term they want you to calculate, and you can get to those quickly. Um, however, there's not really, like, this is, in some ways, this is the short step. That's the long way. <laughs> this is the short way, right? I can just go straight to the, the expansion without any more brackets. All the brackets are gone. Okay. Uh, let's finish off. What's the, um, what's the next term? Uh, get around that way. Is that okay? What's the, last, what's the second last term? X squared plus... Hold on, hold on. I'm missing something. Five. Five? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's ascending, right? Ascending, yeah. And then the last one? Zero. Okay. Okay. So let's finish this off. I reckon we can do all of these all in one hit now because I think the numbers are fairly easy. Uh, just look at all of your binary coefficients. That's the only thing contributing a numerical factor here. And then have a look at your powers carefully. Okay. So here you've got x to the 10. All right, have a look closely. Uh, we know there are no other numerical coefficients, so I'm just going to write that 5 straight away. I know I can write a plus because there are no minus signs sort of jamming things up. X, to, x squared to the power of 4 is going to be x to the 8. But then you're actually going to subtract one, so it becomes x to the 7. Like so. Uh, for the next one, you've got the 10 out the front. This will be x to the 6. And then here you're going to have... That's actually x to the minus 2, isn't it? So that leaves you with x to the 4. And you kind of set up for yourself the pattern. right? Do you see now what the next one's going to be? It's just going to be an x. Okay? You almost don't have to think about it because you can see these powers are doing something predictable. Okay? Um, plus 5 lots of what? Is it 1 or 6? I mean, we, we were provided it without any negative indices, even though I'm thinking it in negative indices, because I go squared, that's a minus 4, so I get minus 2. But since they've provided it to us as a fraction, I'm going to provide it back as a fraction. And you can see, look, I've divided by x cubed to get from one term to the next. Uh, and then what's the last one? Whatever it is. Ta-da! Okay. Now, I'll just say, yes, it did seem like it took a long time. I'd argue, though, it took a lot shorter than this. Okay? So that's what we're looking at. These kinds of questions about wrapping your head around what are all the pieces and how do they all to go, go together, um, that's what this is all about. Okay.